Hi and welcome to this overview of the Aconeer Exploration Tool. The focus of today's video will be the distance detector. I will go through all the parameters and tell you a bit about how they affect your radar performance. Let's begin. So before we start presenting the settings and parameters, make sure you have connected your module and chosen the distance detector in the menu on the left hand side. If you have several sensors connected, make sure to choose the intended one under the sensor selection section. The first step in running the detector is to calibrate it. This is easily done by pressing the calibrate detector button. When the calibration is done, we can start our detector. After pressing start measurement, we will see two graphs in the center of the interface. The top graph presents the amplitude of your sweep and your thresholds. It will also display the distance to the main peak if one is found. The bottom graph displays the estimated distance for the found peaks over time together with their strength. When we are finished with our measurement, we can click the stop button. Now let's go through the detector parameters. The first ones are range start and end. These sets the start point and end point of the measurement interval in meters. Remember not to set range end further away than the actual distance you want to measure, since this results in a higher power consumption and can result in unwanted effects. The next setting is the enable close range leakage cancellation. So close range leakage cancellation refers to the process of measuring close to the sensor by first characterizing the direct leakage and then subtracting it from the measured sweep in order to isolate the signal component of interest. If you have this box checked, it is important that while calibrating the detector, the sensor is installed in its intended geometry and that there are no objects in front of the sensor that would interfere with direct leakage. Another important note is that the direct leakage will be affected by temperature variations. So if you have a use case where you expect large temperature changes, it's better to uncheck this setting. The next setting is max step length. This sets the maximum step length used in the subsweeps. If no value is supplied, the max step length is automatically configured to appropriate size good depth resolution while minimizing power consumption. The setting beneath is the max profile. This sets the longest profile allowed in the subsweeps. The distance detector will automatically assign the profile to each subsweep to maximize the signal to noise ratio. A longer profile yield higher SNR at the given power consumption level, while shorter profiles give better resolution. The setting below is the reflector shape. Here you choose your intended reflector shape. The expected reflector shape is considered when assigning HVAS to the subsweeps. For planar reflectors, such as fluid surfaces, select the planar option. For all other reflectors, select generic. The next setting is the peak sorting method. If multiple objects are find, uh, found in the scene, this will give rise to several peaks. The peak sorting allows selection of which peaks is of highest importance. If you choose the closest option, uh, this sorts the peaks according to the distance from the sensor, where the first peak will be the closest peak. If you instead choose strongest, this sorts the peaks according to their relative strength, where the first peak will be the one with the highest strength. Now we have come to the threshold methods. If you click the drop down menu, you will see four different options. The first one is fixed amplitude threshold. This sets a fixed amplitude threshold over the entire range. This threshold does not have temperature compensation built in. So when temperature increases, the amplitude of the signal and noise will decrease. So for use cases in environments with fluctuating temperatures, one would instead want a threshold which compensates for the decreasing SNR at higher temperatures. The next option is the fixed strength threshold. This threshold takes a fixed strength value and converts to the corresponding amplitude value. The purpose is to produce a threshold which is able to detect an object with a specific reflectiveness independent of the distance to the object 
since amplitude decreases with the distance to the object. Ideally, the strength estimate is agnostic to the distance of the object. However, due to close range effect, the strength tends to be underestimated at short distances below one meter. The fixed strength threshold does not have any temperature compensation built in. Our next option is the recorded threshold. So in situations where stationary objects are present, uh, the background signal is not flat. To isolate objects of interest, the threshold is based on measurements of the static environment. The sensitivity of the threshold is adjusted by the threshold sensitivity setting, which is found below. Uh, the recorded threshold has a built-in temperature compensation based on the internal temperature sensor. The last option is the CFAR threshold. This threshold method constructs a threshold for a certain distance by using the signal from neighboring distances of the same sweep. This requires that the object gives rise to a single strong peak, such as fluid surfaces, and not, for example, the level in a large wage container. The main advantage is that the memory consumption is minimal. The sensitivity of the threshold is controlled through threshold sensitivity. As the C4 threshold is formed and based on each momentary sweep, any temperature effects on the signals are implicitly accounted for by the algorithm. Now we come to the setting signal quality. So by dragging in the slider, we can adjust the target signal quality that we want to maintain throughout the measured range. Note the higher signal quality will increase power consumption and measurement time. Our last setting is the update rate. Here we can set the update rate for the detector in Hertz. And uh, this concludes today's video. See you next time.